tabs or spaces. Where do you put your curly brace on your functions and conditionals? On the same line or the next line? What line endings do you like within your text editor? Do you like an 80 character width or 120 character width? This is the type of stuff that coders love to argue about. Hi. I'm Joel, creator of pixelmerb.com and this YouTube channel. In this video, I'm gonna share with you how I like to style out my code, the code formatting that I use when I'm writing code for the projects I'm working on, and how I like to reset code that I get from other projects. If you're a person that codes a lot, this is gonna be an important subject. Now, quick question, does it really matter if your code is well formatted? Is there gonna be an improvement in the performance of your code, whether it's a website or an application? Is it gonna be faster? Well, we do know that minification of code helps out in terms of the processing speed of a website, the load time of that site. But does messy code really make a difference? Now, the truth is, it really doesn't, but there's an indirect consequence you as the coder, as the programmer, you're gonna be less optimized yourself. Whenever you're gonna be reviewing your code or somebody else's code, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult for you to follow along with that code. By being consistent and keeping your code readable, it's gonna make your work as a coder a lot easier. And when you share your code with others, they're gonna appreciate it. So again, in this video, I'll share with you how I like to reset code that I get from other projects and how I like to format my code. Let's do this. All right, if you haven't had a chance, make sure you subscribe to the channel and take a look at some of my other videos that I have on how to code, how to blog, how to create your own WordPress powered website, how to create WordPress themes and plugins, things of that nature. So the goal of this video is gonna to be to talk about how you can format your code or the code that you're bringing in from other projects to your liking. Now again, we're gonna cover stuff like tabs and spaces, how you can set up your IDE or your text editor in order to have a default for that. We're gonna talk about curly braces. Do you use them on the same line or on a new line? We're gonna talk about line endings. We're gonna talk about indentation. We're gonna talk about white space, capitalization, things of that nature. All right, so for this video, I'm gonna be working on my text editor or my IDE of choice, which is PHP Storm. So right here, real quick, when you go to settings, you can go to code style and you can set up how you want your IDE or PHP Storm in this case to work with different styling. You can set it up for PHP, you can set it up for HTML, for JavaScript, you can set it up for CSS, things of that nature. Now, if you're not gonna be using PHP Storm, you could also do this with VS Code as well and with Atom. The key theme here is to configure your IDE or your text editor to use the tabs or spaces of your liking. Do you want to use four spaces? Do you want to use two tabs? How do you want it to work with your code? And also in terms of the styling of your code. So again, here I have PHP Storm. You can always set from a language of your choice or from a predefined style. But now if you go into VS Code, you can always go into your settings, go into the editor, or you can go to commonly used here and take a look around. See how you want VS Code to work with your code itself. For example, over here it says tab size, the number of spaces a tab is equal to. Do you want it to be set to two? Do you want it to be set to four? You can configure that here. Do you want to insert spaces when pressing tab? That's something you can customize over here. Could also work on the word wrap column. Do you want it to be 80 characters long or do you want it to be 120 characters? Do you want it to auto indent? Do you want to have a default formatter? Do you want it to insert spaces when pressing tab? And how do you want to work with the uh, default end of line? These are some of the things that you can work with here. And with PHP Storm, when I was able to do the um, predefined language that I want to set up my styling to, you could do something similar here by using an extension. So you could use something like Beautify, or you could use something like Prettier, which is also a very popular code formatter. And these give you some of the functionality that you'll need in order to format your code based on the stylings that you set up. And you see over here, they have some examples set up. But let me go back to my browser real quick. Right now, I'm going to go to my website here, picksomeweb.com, and go to the blog section. I'm going to go over here to where it says uh, the bubble sort algorithm PHP tutorial. So here I have a snippet of code, and often what you're going to find is that people copy code from a website. So let's say I copy this code. I'm going to go back to my IDE. 
Let's see, I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna right click, new file, call it demo.php. So now I'm gonna paste that code that I got from my website. Let's say this code was not to my liking in terms of the style formatting itself. What can you do? You know, this is something that might happen. Or what if you want to, you know, quickly format your code to make it more readable and maintainable? Because let's face it, if you're coding, you might not want to be too troubled with making sure your spaces or your tabs are where they need to be or if your braces are consistent, things of that nature. You want to just get the code onto the editor or onto the IDE because you're kind of in a groove, you're kind of in a flow. So consider the first time you're sitting down at your editor or your IDE for that particular project as if you're creating a first draft. And yeah, it might look messy at first but that's something you can always clean up later on. So let's say this is not styled towards my liking, right? What can you do? Well, one thing I like to do, if the project's small, what I do is I'll use the find and replace functionality built into the text editor or the IDE. So in this case, I'm gonna use the replace functionality. So it's control R, command R, depending on which operating system you're using. I'm gonna make sure that the rejects for regular expressions is checked off. And you could do the same thing in VS Code by, let's say I'm gonna open up a file, or I'm gonna open up a folder. When you're gonna use the find functionality, find and replace, wanna make sure you check off the regular expression icon right here. So let's go back to PHP Storm real quick. What I'll do here, so I'm gonna look for new line characters with spaces. So you see it highlighted them all over here for me. What I'm gonna do, is go to the replace section right here. I'm just gonna put new line. Now we can get more fancy with this. We can actually make this regular expression even more detailed, but this is for something that's very simple. So let's start replacing all that until we get no more matches. So now just save it, make sure that it works. You know, if you're using um, PHP Storm or if you're using VS Code, you'll get a notification if your code is error free has built-in debugging for that. So that's why I like both editors or IDEs. PHP Storm's awesome and so is VS Code. So there's no errors here, I have the check mark there. And if I go to VS Code, and I do the same thing here, you see it's identifying them for me. No matches. And you see that I have no errors in the code. So that's good. Go back to uh, PHP Storm. So now what I want to do is based on my coding style, the rules that I had set for the project, again, over here in the settings section, I have my rules for tabs and indents, for spaces, for wrappings and braces, blank lines, PHP doc, code conversion, things of that nature. But I set it from a predefined style. You can choose whichever one you want based on the project you're working on. So what I'll do here is Let's see, I'll select all, go to code, go to reformat code. In this case, it's control, alt, and L. Might be command, alt, L for you. So I'll just select all. And now the code is reformatted based on the rules that I had set. Now you can see it's a lot cleaner. It's a lot easier to read, right? So when I had the opening curly brace on the new line, or if things were formatted properly, it would have been harder for me to definitely identify where those were. Now, it might just take a fraction of a second, it might just take you another minute, but when you're working on large projects, that takes up time, and time is money. So in this case, now I formatted it based on the rules that I want, and now I can maintain this code and work on this code easier. Now, the argument of tabs versus spaces, that's a long argument. I have another video that talks about that topic. I think it's really dependent on what your style is, what you feel is more important for you, or the projects that you're working on and stick with it. In terms of curly braces, this is the style that I like to work with in terms of having the curly brace for like my for loops or my functions to be on the same line, then the closing one to be on a separate line in that manner. You see, I like my indentation to be a certain way and it's important for you to nest your code properly so you can see what is code that's working within another block of code itself. So we see we're in the function here. So then I indent over here and then I have my length variable. And you see I have my assignment operators lined up here for both variables. Then I have the for loop, the first one. 
and we're using recursion here. So then I have my second for loop here. That's nested inside this for loop, so that's why it's indented. So that makes it easier for me to follow it. Then you see I have my if conditional here, and then I have these variables indented as well. Then I have the assignment operators lined up. That makes it easier for me to manage and maintain. Now let's say you're working with CSS, right? I'm gonna go right here. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna look for all the new line spaces, replace them with new line characters. Make sure your rejects is checked. Replace all, and then I'll just reformat it. So the same thing happened here. Now we have um, my opening curly brace right here. We have the closing one there, have some separation, some indentation. This makes it a lot easier for me to read. Now what about JavaScript? So say I go over here, Right now I have the Prism library brought in over here. This is for copying and pasting, functionality for syntax highlighting, things of that nature. So let's say I want to work with a different structure for this project right here. I could do the same thing. I could start removing all that and then replace it with my code formatting. It's almost like resetting it first and then reformatting it. What's important is consistency. You see over here, I'm using hyphens, right? So, you know, you could use the hyphen naming convention or you could use camel casing. Like for instance, over here, I use camel casing in this instance. I could have used an underscore there if I wanted in the middle to separate the words. And in some cases, depending on the language you're working with, you could use hyphens. But the key thing is to be consistent in how you code. And now if you're working with HTML, we'll go over here, create a new file demo.html. I'm just going to put in some code here real quick. So let's say I have a body tag there. And now let's say I have an article tag. What I could do here, what you want to do is have everything indented. So that way you know what's inside the body tag and what's inside the article tag. So in here, let's say I have the H1. It automatically created that for me. So you have that there. You see that's indented. So you want to make sure that's done. And if it's not, again, we go to our little trick here. We'll replace everything. So we're kind of resetting it. And then we can go about applying our code formatting to this. Now, where do these rules come from? What style guides can you follow? I'm going to go back to the browser. And we can go to this website over here to check out some style guides. This one is from Google itself. And it can give you um, some guides in terms of what you're working on. So let's say if you're working on HTML and CSS, you can see the style guide for that. Another one is this one here by Mozilla. And they'll give you some best practices or information how to style out your code for these various languages. Now, if you're working with PHP, you can go here to the php-fig.org, and you can see some of the um, recommendations they have. Again, it's project dependent on how you'll actually format your code. Now, if you don't want to use the built-in code formatting in your editor or IDE, you can always go to some of these websites here. This is uh, to format your HTML. You would just paste in the code there. You could set up how you want it to be indented, things of that nature, and then you could format it. For CSS, you can go right here and you can paste in your code there. And again, these are some of the controls that you have to set it up how you want to format your code. For PHP, we can go here to phpformatter.com and you can choose the style that you want to use. And you can set some of the controls here as well. For JavaScript, you can go here and you can beautify your JavaScript with this tool here. And you see you have some of the controls right there. Now, if you want to minify your code, you can go right here to minifier.org, and you can minify your JavaScript and your CSS code here. And if you have code that you're inheriting that is minified and doesn't have an unminified version of it, you could always go here and unminify the code there. Or you could do it in your IDE or text editor as well. The key thing to remember is that you want to make sure that you're consistent and that your code is readable. Now, does it really matter? Again, in terms of the performance of a website or an application, it might not matter if your code is messy, but it's easier for you, the coder, the programmer, to work with your code, to maintain your code, to improve your code, or to hand off your code to another developer 
and make sure that it's easier for them to understand. You wanna optimize your workflow and being consistent matters. Having readable code matters. Working on your indentation, your white space, your capitalization and naming conventions, that all helps. So just as a recap, I'm gonna go back to PHP Storm. Let's say we're here. What I like to do is if I get code from the internet or if I'm working on code that I've been working on feverishly for a while, and maybe I didn't apply the proper formatting while I was coding because I was in the groove of actually coding. What I could always do is just find the new line characters and space characters, make sure my regular expression is checked right there and replace everything with a new line, reset all the spacing, and then use my style guide that I'm using to format the code. And you could do that with PHP Storm, you could do it with VS Code as well. Now for larger projects, you might want to automate the process of taking care of reformatting and styling out the code in a more automated fashion by using something like Node.js or using Gulp, which actually depends on Node, using Webpack, or whatever automation tool you have at your disposal. Now that's all project dependent, and that's beyond the scope of this video. But if you want to learn more about how to use Gulp.js, I have another video on how to do that. I'll leave a link to that in the cards in the upper right hand corner. But the ultimate goal is to try to make yourself a more efficient coder. And a major part of that is your code formatting and your code styles. And of course, automating as much as you can. Take a look at some of the other videos on my channel. I create videos on how to code, how to create WordPress powered websites, how to blog. I have freelance web developer tips. And I show you how to work with the WordPress database and also how to create WordPress themes and plugins. Okay, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and take some time and check out some of the other videos I have on this channel. And I will see you in the next video. Happy coding.